One of the first and elementary problems in quantum mechanics is known as the particle in a box, or the infinite potential well. In this problem, we have a potential that is zero between two boundaries and infinite otherwise. This means the entire wave function must be entirely between x equals zero and x equals l. To start, to start this, we start off with the Schrodinger wave equation. This is the time-dependent Schrodinger wave equation. However, in this case, because our potential is time-independent, this equation is separable. And we may make a and we, we can simplify it by writing the generic wave function of x and t as a smaller wave function only of space and a time dependent part of i omega t where energy equals h bar omega because we have a simplified uh, we have time independence we can use the time independent Schrodinger wave equation. We write this as the second derivative of the wave function equals 2m h bar squared bracket E minus U times our wave function. The particle in a box is a useful example because of its great simplicity. The, since the wave function is zero in the infinite region, uh, the, there's no wave function here. But whether, but whether we do have the wave function, our potential is zero. It means we can simplify our the equation by writing the second derivative of the of the wave function is two m over h bar squared e psi. This can be solved with a the general formula uh, of psi equals a. In general, this would be the solution. This would be sines and cosines. So we'll write out our solution to be a sine square root two m over h bar squared e times x and likewise for the cosine function. Notice that if we take the second derivative of these functions that we get back the original function times our constants. Now, if we take our boundary conditions into account, our boundary conditions are clear that the wave function is zero outside of here. Therefore, it's also zero at the edge. However, because the cosine does not is not z zero at x equals zero, we can disregard that part of the solution. Because, because sine does satisfy that. We can keep it. However, this also gives us a way to determine the value allowable values for e. We 
We'll start with um, letting the wave function be zero at the far boundary. So we'll have we can write a sine square root two m over h bar squared e times x. However, we want it to be zero at the boundary. So instead of writing x, we're going to replace x. We want it. We want it to be zero right here. So we're going to replace x with l. Now, a sine function always equals zero when we have a multiple of when inside the sine function is a multiple of pi. So this means that if this is true, then that is true. So we can simplify ourselves by writing root over 2m over h bar squared e under the entire square root times L equals n pi where n can be an integer 1, 2, 3, and so on. The negative integers and 0 are not... The negative integers give us no additional useful information and zeros doesn't work. Okay, so this means we can if we can solve for e, we can get some information about how this equation should, how our wave function should be set up, and what the allowable energies are, which is an important part of quantum mechanics, because only certain energies will be allowable. If we solve for energy, we so divide both sides by l and Take the, we'll square, we'll square, the, square that, square both sides, 2m e h bar and pi over l squared. e equals, actually we can that was a squared right there. Can't forget that. We get n pi h bar over l squared with a 1 over 2 m. Thus, we have energies for different discrete n's. Now we can take this and replace this back inside our original wave function. If we take this, we can write Our wave function equals a sine. We had square root two m over h bar squared times an energy. Energy was n pi h bar over l squared. Squared should be on the outside. Don't let me confuse you. So 1 over 2m. 
From here we can make certain clear simplifications that get us back to a simpler form. 2m will cancel out, h bar will cancel out. We are left with a, which is our amplitude, which we'll solve for in a minute, sine of, so now we have the square root, n squared, pi squared, with the x, for l squared, Once again, if we simplify, we get a sine n pi over l x. This is our wave function. However, we are not quite done because we do not know what, what a is, capital A. This is an unknown. However, there is the wave function is subject to one more condition that we need to satisfy. That is called nor normalization. Namely, that the probability of the wave function over all space can't be more than one. It just can't. So, we're going to integrate the wave function. over all space-time, which for us is actually a very narrow region. We'll take the wave function squared, actually the conjugate of the wave function times itself. Since we're in one dimension, we can only need to do dx. Because the integral is only non-zero between zero and L, we can ignore the rest. Everywhere else, it's zero. Because, but be, they're conjugate, however, because there's no imaginary numbers in this particular wave function, we can simply write it as a square. So we'll write out zero to L a squared sine squared of n pi over l times x dx. And this must be, must, must be equal to 1. Neither more nor less. The solution for this can be found in any elementary uh, book of integrals or an integral table you can find either in books or on the, on the internet. Internet, <clears throat> excuse me. The solution for this integral, I'm going to take capital A out. The, in, the solution for this integral is x over 2 minus sine of 2n pi over L times x over 4n pi over L. Close bracket evaluated from 0 to L. However, okay, which we can simplify this by saying, well, when sine is 0, this, is, this term is dead. When sine is L, it gives us 2 and pi, because L over L would cancel. Well, that, so the sine equals 0 either way which leaves us with 
L over 2 minus 0 over 2. Evaluated, we get 1 equals a squared L over 2. Or simply, a equals square root 2 over L. This means that our final wave function is is square root 2 over L sine of, let's check our original function, we originally had, it's right here, n pi over L times x. We have our, there is our wave function. If we wish to, to re-include the time-dependent portion, we can simply write e to the i omega t. That is the solution for the particle in a box with infinite potential well.